Hello people, I'm Ginny Metherill. I'm a fourth generation witch. I'm a British traditional witch and so my witchcraft follows the natural cycle of seasons. And I was looking at my window this morning and I saw that the leaves were falling to the floor and the trees shed their summer clothes. This annual fall of leaves shows us that we should be following the same pattern and we should shed our summer clothes. But I like to do this with my aura. Auras are incredibly important as part of witchcraft and a ritual cleansing and clearing and shedding the negative energies that you may well have picked up over the last few months is really important at this very chaotic time in order to move forward in our best possible attire. Now a witch has got to eat, so let's say thank you to today's sponsor for this video, Aura Health. Aura Health is the new and improved app for your mental well-being. There's all sorts of help on there and you can try it for free just by putting in my code into the app and then off you go. They're currently promoting a 30-day meditation challenge and if, like me, you're a bit scatty and a bit difficult and find meditation, you know, not the easiest thing in the world to do because my brain's going a hundred miles a minute then this app is really helpful there's plenty to choose from it can help you with sleep it can help you with focus it can help you with those slightly dark thoughts it's a great app with so much choice oh, and i particularly enjoyed actually the stories uh, you know listening to somebody else talk to me calms my mind from listening to me talk to me which as my children will tell you i do a lot or it's really easy to use. You simply open an account and you're ready to go. Input my creator code. You can trial it for free. It is a really easy app to use and I thoroughly recommend it. Thank you, Aura, for sponsoring this video. Now, from one Aura to another, let's get back to how we can look after our actual Aura. So in order to follow this season of the year with our seasonal cleansing, we need to look at our aura. And if you don't know what an aura is, it is your magical prana that exudes from your body. It's sort of your animal magnetism almost. It is the second skin that you have, which you can't see. You can feel your aura, and I teach this in my coven meetings, this particular season, so we will have gone through this last three months, picking up and joining in with the world's natural cycle. We can't help it, it's part of what we do. So as the leaves start to fall from the trees, so should we shed our summer aura. Now you might have been doing cleansing rituals throughout the summer, and that is great, and so you should. Never ever, ever stop cleansing. However, this is a more in-depth ritual that I want to show you in order to really put yourself in the best foot forward for the coming darker months. Auras can pick up the negative entities and negative energies that flow around the world. These can be anything, you know, it can be your partner has come home in a bad mood and you gather a bit of that negative energy. It could be that you go out and you meet an entity who then thinks I'd like to attach myself to you. And this happens if you're psychically aware. Believe you me, it really does. Or it might be that you have been visiting somewhere such as a cemetery or a graveyard or you might have been to hospital and there is a huge amount of negative energy hanging around hospitals just because it is a place of the sick and so that sick energy will often be shed by patient and then picked up by others. So we're going to do a very in-depth ritual cleansing and purification of our aura. Now I'm going to call it a smudge. Now this word smudge, before you come for me, is actually an English word, it's not Native American. It has nothing to do with Native Americans. And this ritual that we use as smudging has got also nothing to do with Native Americans. And it's not um, appropriation of their ritual because it was our ritual. I don't know what Native Americans call their ritual and it's closed and quite rightly, closed practice stays with them. I'm not appropriating that. I'm appropriating my own cultural traditions. This has been going on for generations. For, for every coven. My coven and myself will get together and do this to each other. We will richly cleanse each other. And there is a hugely important reason that we should do this. Once we have richly cleansed each other, we know that we carry and harbour no negative energies or entities. 
because if we do carry negative energies or entities, they can change the outcome of our spells. And so any practices or you know magic that we are creating can be actively changed by these negative energies. So it's really important, especially in a group setting, to make sure that you're not infecting everybody else. So there are two steps to this particular ritual. And the first one is to use water. Water is the best way that you can purify anything. And the second thing we're going to use is some salt. This is a very simple ritual and it's a really good one for anybody and I recommended it wholeheartedly. This has got healing energy, it's got rejuvenation energy, it's got transformation energy and it's got relaxing energy to it and that is simply to have a ritual bath. Now a ritual bath is simply a bath that is dedicated to the purpose of the ritual cleansing bath. You're going to need to think about what you like in your bath and if you don't have a bath a shower is equally as good. For myself I enjoy a rose fragrance and I like anything flavoured with roses so I will use some rose scented body products whatever they may be. However, whatever you use, the most important thing to use is salt. Now, in a shower, I would suggest that you use a salt scrub and in a bath, maybe some scented bath salts. Whatever you think is particularly delicious. Now, we tend to carry negative energies around this area here. So the back of our neck, the back of our shoulders, the back of our head tends to be the places where things cling on, like a sort of backpack for the back of your head. And this is the area that you're going to pay real attention to. Get one of those nice loofers and do a bit of scrubbing with some salt. So once you've got out of your bath, it's very important to wear fully clean clothes. Don't go out into your bedroom and just pick up the clothes that you've dropped on the bedroom floor, which you'd never do. I know you're much too clean. Don't pick up those and put them on thinking, oh, they'll do, I'll do another day. No, not good enough. I want lovely clean clothes, please, people. I mean, in the olden days, in a witch's coven, what you do is you go to your sacred well or your, you know, sacred spring or whatever it is that you were purifying yourself for, and you'd all take off your clothes and jump in and scrub each other, light a bonfire, dance around it naked to get dry. That I love, I have to say. I mean, my days of dancing naked around a bonfire are over because I'm too old and nobody wants to see that quite frankly not even me however when I was younger there was certainly a bit of dancing naked round a bonfire in my youth and I very much enjoyed it too that's standard witch's practice so that's part one we've done the ritual cleansing we're all beautifully clean now we have to really get in depth into our aura and the only way really to do that is either to use another person's energy or smoke there are so many different ways that people like to cleanse themselves with smoke, but we're going to do a particular way and I'm going to show you what to do. This will really grasp any remaining negative energies or it possibly pick up a negative entity because people do carry them and smoke will detect this. So I want you to light up whatever incense you like. Palo Santo is very nice. Okay, so I use a herbal stick. So this one's a rose herbal stick. This is, I mean, it's bright red, this one, isn't it? This is a rose and sage herbal stick. Lovely. I use one of those often. And you can just use one of these incense sticks. With your incense sticks, the old fashioned ones, if I can call them that, like frankincense, sandalwood, patchouli, lavender, these are known to be extremely cleansing and I would really recommend using one of those, whichever one is your most preferred smell. Now with all these things, the first thing you must do is cast a circle. And you're going to say these words, I cast this circle to help me cleanse my aura. You're going to say those words three times, you're going to say them out loud, very important to enunciate, that will set the spell. Uh, once you have cast your circle, you can walk in and out of it. It won't break. It will last for a couple of hours. They normally do. So make sure you've got a good head of smoke on your incense stick, or whatever it is that you're using. We're going to start like this. We're going to take it around our head. Now you will feel, as it passes through the front of your head, it should be clear. You'll feel that the stick will move smoothly around the front of your head. But as you get around the back, you might feel it sticking through the air. Gosh, mine's sticking. 
that's interesting because I haven't been anywhere. Hmm. That's really funny. I'm actually carrying some of my husband's negative energy because the poor man has got a terrible toothache and his face is swollen up. I mean, he looks like a hippo at the moment. That's so tall. And I think I've taken a bit of his negative energy off. So I'm going to show you how to get rid of it. So once you have diagnosed that you are going around your head and you've found that it's a bit sticky at the back, I want you to scrape the incense stick up and down, up and down. Just, you know, crossing all over that sticky area that you can feel. Then put your incense stick down, take your hands, rub them together to get the energy into them, to get you want some warmth in your hands, rub them together and comb that area. Can you see that? I'm just combing that area and flicking it out. I'm going to do it three times. And then I'm going to take my incense stick again and take it round my head. At the front, it's nice and clear. And now it's feeling clear at the back. Now you need to do the rubbing with the smoke and the combing with your hands and flicking away as many times as it takes to get rid of that negative energy. Once you've felt that that area is clear, then you can move on to your shoulders and check that there's nothing there. Then you need to go across the front and then having established that you've got rid of most of the negative of energy, you can start doing all of your body. It's particularly important to do your hands because they are, of course, the tools of your trade. So, you know, do your hands and your feet. Do the soles of your feet because this is where you hold onto the earth with. And that needs to be clear so that you can really pull the earth's energy up through your feet and ground your aura properly. If you do this as a deep clean session for the change of the seasons, I would personally recommend to do this before every witch's sabbat. And the rest of the time, you can just give yourself a nice cleanse with smoke whenever you need to. Now, can I just point out that this is just my method and you might have a better method. The ritual bath is a must and the ritual smoke is a must, but how you do it is up to you. What do you do? Would you leave me a comment below and let me know? Because I'd be really interested to find out how you go about your ritual purification. If you want to learn how to do this, we do a ritual purification session to see if you have got any negative energies and negative entities on you at my coven every single month. Just go to patreon.com forward slash Ginny Netherall, sign in as a coven member. Please also like and subscribe because it thrills my heart when people like and subscribe. It makes me very happy and I will see you next month.